Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's tutorial, the quarantine tutorial. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes and let people get on. But um, today, I want to do a Facebook Live. I've been promising you guys a tutorial on how to make a silhouette image, silhouette composite. Um, they're fun. They're not really that hard to do. But I am going to do one that's a little bit more um, not complex. Hello, Facebook user. I have to tell you, I can't see your names. I'm using StreamYard and it blocks your name. So if, um, I think there might be like a little link on, let's see, I'm gonna go into the group and look on my other screen. I think there's a little link that will give you permission for your name to be shown. Otherwise, just tell me who you are. Um, let's see. Oh, Cindy, I could see it on my screen now. But I think, um, if you look at the top, if you look at where it says, I'm going live using StreamYard, before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at the StreamYard.com Facebook. If you click that, it'll give me permission. It'll give you permission to, so I'll be able to see who's talking to me. That'd be awesome. Um, so anyway, we're gonna do one that's a little bit more advanced. I mean, not super advanced, but I see, um, you know, Silhouettes have been around for a long time and they're not that hard to do. And I just wanted to show you a couple of little extra tricks, tricks that I kind of, you know, used and did um, when I made my silhouettes. And I hope, hopefully then the group will be popping with some silhouettes this week, which would be really fun. So um, I uh, wanna wait a couple more minutes, let a couple other people get on. So if anybody has any questions about anything that's going on in the group, welcome to this group. If you're new, to any of my groups and you're not from our big sister group inside the photo box, then um, you should check that out because that's all about photo box compositing. And um, we have a really close to 20,000 people, which is insane, um, really amazing. Um, I can't believe it. And I need to tell you that 20,000 people and very little problems. This is like the kindest group of people. And you always hear things like admins will start to complain. Oh no, you know, the group is getting so big and people are not nice to each other. Or you see it on pages where admins have to kind of say, guys, you have to be nicer to each other or I'm gonna throw people out. You never have that problem. Everybody is just nice. I think, um, I think, Facebook groups are like communities and you set a tone and a culture and our culture is always positivity and being kind to one another. And I really do not, in the couple of times where someone's throwing out a nasty comment, I'm gone. <laughs> My first year, if Doris is on, she'll tell you that the first time I had to throw somebody out of the group, I was really nervous. I don't like to, I don't like that kind of stuff, but I also don't like when people are not nice to each other. So, um, pulled up my big girl pants and uh, I booted them out. So and we really don't have those problems. So I don't have to pull my pants too often. Anyway, um, so we have, oh, Michelle's on. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so um, any questions before we get started? We'll let a couple more people get on here. Also, there'll be a replay of this if anybody wants to see it, if they miss it. All these live tutorials that I do in the group live inside the group. So I'm gonna put them in a unit. I have, or you can look up the videos. All right, so I'm gonna start off by sharing my screen with y'all. And um, let's see here. And pop on Photoshop and see how it goes. Okay, so I have to remember how to do this. It's been a little while. And I'm really gonna go from start to finish. So, okay, I'm gonna share screen one with you. And then I'm gonna, Pop on, I hope it's working. I just wanna see what it looks like on the other end. And I'm hoping that you can see my screen. Do you guys, can you see? Okay, I could see it now. There's a little delay, I'm looking, I have two screens and I'm looking on my second screen and um, okay, I can, I can see now. Okay, so anyway, this is, um, I was working on the pictures from the live tutorial that I did on my, on Wednesday in the Inside the Photo Box group, I did a photo box tutorial uh, shoot. I did a live demo shoot. So if you're curious to see what that looks like, that tutorial lives inside that group. You could always pop in on there and you could see it. So these were the uh, pictures I was working on. Um, I cut out a whole bunch of pictures. Whoops, let me just... Um, uh, once I start something on Photoshop, it starts to freeze up on me. Let's go, Photoshop, let's go. 
Hey, Sandra. Oh, good. Thanks, Tiff. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm going to start off by, you know, the very beginning. I'm going to do like an 8 by 10. So I'm going to start off with going File, New. I'm going to make a new document. And I'm going to go, I'm going to use inches. I want it to be, um, actually, I'm going to make it a 16 by 20 because um, 20 inches wide, 16 inches high. And I'm gonna use 300 resolution, RGB color, I'm not making anything else here, it looks good. And um, I wanna do this because a 20 by 16, that gives you the ability to blow it up a little bit, but it's in the same aspect ratio of an eight by 10. So if you wanted to easily um, size it down to an eight by 10 and print it as an eight by 10, that fits perfectly. Create. All right, and we have our blank, we have our blank screen now. Okay, so um, first thing I want to do is place embedded. I went to file and I'm going to look for my folder that I had so neatly made, but it's not here. Okay, so actually I have it in a folder called tutorial, just so, you know, why, why wouldn't it be in tutorial? And I'm going to take and pull in a photo. I'm going to use the photo from the samples that I had shown you guys in the group. So this photo is not one that I've taken. Um, it's stock photography. I think I got it on unsplash.com. Um, I do have many photos like this actually, so I don't know why I didn't just use my own, but um, I do. So I, I think I'm gonna wanna move this down just slightly. Maybe just, I don't like having the, um, <clears throat> the horizon line dead center. And I'm just gonna kind of pull this. I'm gonna hold down my shift button because then I'll be able to stretch a little bit wider and sort of change around the aspect ratio if I hold my, if I hold my shift button down while I'm doing that. Okay, let me just press okay. So we have a nice, so a lot of times you see silhouettes and they have grass. I am gonna show you how to do grass later. Um, but I purposely, I like the whole reflection. I think that's kind of cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in Again, this little lady, okay? She's the photo, again, she is also stock photography. I really want to show you things with stock photography <clears throat> because I wanna show you how cool it is. If you you know, if you wanna make a template for clients or you wanna do this for, for clients and, and um, you know, and make it so using their photos, I wanted to show you that you can use any really any photo and turn it into a silhouette. But also if you're just having fun with this, I mean, if you're not selling it and you just, you know, you're here because you just love photography and digital art and you just wanna play and you're maybe, you don't have the capability of going out right now and taking photos of anyone, you can look at stock photography and you can find, you know, something that you'd wanna use there. Not everything works perfectly all the time, but you know, it's a great way to practice using stock photos. So, hi, Elizabeth. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I wanna cut her out of this image, and then I'm gonna turn her into a silhouette. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go here to um, my quick selection tool, and I'm gonna use Photoshop's select subject. I like select subject. I think that it works well, especially when you have a lot of contrast. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna press select subject and let Photoshop start the work. But you know, you're gonna have to sort of tweak it from there on because it usually doesn't find everything perfectly. But it's a great start, especially in an image like this where the subject is really so apparent. So, all right, so, so far we have the subject here. She's looking pretty good. I would have to cut and add in some more um, selection to her feet. So I am actually still in the plus sign up here. And I'm gonna add, actually go to the minus sign. And I'm gonna, oops, actually I don't wanna do that. Sorry, I'm gonna do that, uh, I'm going backwards one. Yeah, I really do wanna add to my selection. And it's just not picking it up on it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you. I'm going to uh, 
go to select and, and by the way, this is real life stuff, right? So, you know, people who work with Photoshop, you use a tool, sometimes, you know, you forget which tool you use, sometimes you use it and then it doesn't work the way you want it to and you just have to keep trying. It's Photoshop is, there's a lot of trial and error, right? Stepping backwards, command Z, so you can step backwards or use your history panel to step backwards try, try again, and problem solving, right? So there's a lot of problem solving in Photoshop. Something doesn't work, why? Think about it, you know? So I'm gonna go here to um, select a mask. It takes me into this panel where I can do some refinement. I'm going to look at my view. I'm gonna change the view to, uh, let's see. I'll change it to on layers. That way we can really see what she's gonna look like on the layer. And we could see, I still wanna remove this section. I wanna refine this section a little more. So I'm gonna use my brush tool and I'm gonna to try to select out, maybe make it a little bit bigger, my brush tool. Actually, I'm sorry, please. I need to, two. okay, there we go. And I had this problem last time also. I'm always selecting out too much. If I'm making my brush larger and smaller by um, using my, my bracket tool. And I'm just taking out, actually I'm gonna put this, you know, I'm getting a little confused because the water and her legs are such close of such close color that I'm actually gonna put her on a black. There we go. Now I could see a little bit better. You can go through these modes and it shows you I can solve my marching ants here. Um, I'm just gonna go on black because I really wanna see where I'm taking out. And like I said, it was just a little too close. And I'm just using this brush to eliminate a little bit more. And with the silhouette, so it doesn't really have to be perfect, perfect. And the feet also don't have to be perfect in this because they're gonna kind of get blended in later. And I can work on this even more a little bit later. So now this is really what the silhouette would look like. So would there be any more refinements that I wanna do in here? Maybe up there, no, I think a little too much. I'm gonna go backwards, Command Z. I actually may refine this once we get it into a mask. So I'm gonna use the smooth. I'm gonna smooth out my edges, smooth them out a bit. You know, they are a little bit jaggedy and we can work on that afterwards. Sometimes in certain photos, you just get it like that too. You know, you don't have to work so hard at it. So, but these are some global refinements of it. And then I'm gonna output my setting. This is the output setting. You have all kinds of choices to the selection I'm gonna do it to a layer mask. So it's gonna be immediately selected to a mask. Okay, hang on a second. My dog has to come in scratching at the door. So taking just a second, a little tiny break. Oh. oh, it was a Romeo break. There he is, can you guys see him? I don't know if you can see him. I don't know where he is, but there he is. This is my little pup. All right, put him back down. It's gonna scratch at that door. So I'm gonna um, use my layer mask. I'm going to select so that it, when this goes out, there'll be a mask already placed around it. Press OK. And now you see she's already cut out and in here. So I'm gonna again look at my refinement. And I think I'd still like to pull this out. It's not really, this won't really matter so much because it is um, a silhouette, but um, going into my mask using a black, hard black brush, I mean a soft black brush, let's say, I'm going to go to press the letter B for brush. And I'm gonna make my brush smaller. So this comes in and I'm going to use a I'll start with a soft brush, see how that works. At 100% opacity, so I'm gonna press the zero to make my opacity 100%. And I'm just gonna kind of wipe this out a little bit. And again, down here, this is where I was having some stuff. I'm just gonna kind of, and also 
I'm going to increase the size of my brush and I'm gonna just take that out. We don't need that. And I am going to turn her into a silhouette, the exciting part. I'm gonna use my move tool. You can press just the V to move her. And I, when I have my move tool set, I have it so it says show transformation tools. So I do not have to press control T. Um, but if you need the control, if you need to have the transformation tools turned on and this is not happening for you, you press command or control T, command in a Mac, control in a PC, and then you can make them bigger, you can move them around. All right, I'm using um, an updated C uh, Photoshop CC. So you notice that when I stretched her, she stayed within the correct proportions. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was pull and she stayed proportional. However, let's say I wanted to make her wider, I would have held down the shift button. Oops, let me try that again. I'm gonna hold down the shift button this time and I'm just gonna pull from the sides. That's not good. Oh yeah, there we go. So that would make her that would just widen her up, which I really don't want to do. And so you can make it wider because I'm holding the shift button down, it changes the proportions. I don't want to do that, so I'm just gonna press no and bring her back to the way she was. All right, so I'm just checking and see if there's any questions. Okay. Um, all right, so now we're gonna turn her into a silhouette and then we'll move around a little bit more. So what we're going to do is, this is, right now she is a smart object. You can tell she's a smart object because she has this little thing right there. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to turn her into a silhouette. As a smart object, I'm going to go to image adjustment and I'm going to apply a levels adjustment to her. The reason that I'm doing it this way while she's a smart object is because I will be able to go back later on and adjust that if I wanted to. Um, and you'll see how afterwards. So I'm going to just take the levels. I'm just gonna take this slider, bring it all the way up one way, take this slider, bring it all the way down that way, and voila, you have yourself a silhouette. That's okay. And now you can see that the smart filter was applied right here, and I could turn it on and turn it off. So that's one of the bonuses of using um, smart objects. However, there's another way to do this. If you're not using a smart object, if you don't want to use a smart object, you could, um, I turned her off, you can, you could just apply the levels to her. You wouldn't really be able to change it or, or reduce it. Um, not that we're going to, but you wouldn't be able to. Or you can go to layer, adjustment layer, levels, and then use, you're gonna check that so that it, you're creating a clipping mask and you're gonna clip your layers level, your levels layer to the girl, press okay. And then I don't know why my levels panel comes up over here, but um, I would do the exact same thing, exact same thing. And then um, now you can see I have a levels layer right here. It's clipped automatically to this image. If it wasn't clipped, I'm gonna right click on it, release the clipping mask, you'll see now the levels layer is applied to everything under it. But I wouldn't wanna do that, I would wanna make it clipped. What I did was I right clicked on the layer, opened this panel up and I created a clipping mask. Okay. But I don't need to do that, I just wanted to show you the options. All right. So I'm gonna go back and because I'm using a smart filter, use her this way and take a look at her and I think she looks pretty good. I think she's okay. I don't really think I need to do much refining. You always could though. You know, I would switch over to the to the mask and press my B for brush. Make sure I'm using a black brush. And you know, let's say I didn't like this little edge right there. You could take it out. Um, didn't really bother me. You could change your brush. I right the way I change my brush and I open up that panel is I right click, um, and it opens up the brush panel for you. And that way you can change your brushes pretty quickly. So maybe. Command Z to go backwards. I'm gonna make my brush a tiny bit smaller. And there we go. All right, so I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave it like that. So, um, so now she is a silhouette and I may change her size later. Um, I'm going to 
use the move tool, move her into the center. Oh, I'm going to show you how to open up your rulers for the view. I like to have a ruler here. Sometimes I sometimes I need to pull a ruler down. Oops, to see maybe to to have a line to when I want to make sure that things are really even. Um, if you don't like the line, you can just keep moving it using your move tool. And get rid of it. I'm going to also open up using view a new guide layout, and I'm going to get rid of my columns and just make my margins a half an inch all the way around. I like to have margins around so that way I can guide myself and we can know when um, something is centered and I don't go too far on the edge. So I'm going to place my lady here. I might make her a little bit smaller. Oh, this will happen when you start to adjust something that has a smart filter applied to it. It'll always pop this up. I'm going to press this here and then I won't see the pop-ups anymore. It just means that it takes away the filter for a moment. Oops, command Z. And that's okay. I don't know why all those lines are there. My Photoshop's been acting weird lately. Okay, so I'm going to bring in some numbers now because that's one of the things that was the cool part. So here I'm going to just go to my text. And opening up a text, I'm going to use, um, I like this font. It's called DIN. I happen to like this font a lot, DIN Condensed. I don't think it's a font that was part of Adobe. I think I found it. There are so many free fonts out there, and I'm having like a font obsession this week. So um, you can just Google free font, free chunky font, free swirly font, free pretty font. I mean, just Google it, and it'll take you to um, websites where you can download it for free. So here I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to write it to zero. But up, see up here, I didn't realize my color is peach, so I actually want my color to be black. So press again. Uh, I highlighted it. I'm just changing my color, pressing OK. And I've got my two, my 20. I'm going to move my 20 down here. And um, I'm actually going, while I'm still in the text layer, I went back to the text layer. I'm going to open up this little guy right there. OK, so I wanted to make sure that it was um, bold. I like it bold. That's when it's not bold. That's when it's bold. Press OK. And now I'm going to use my free transformation tool. And I'm going to do Command T. And I'm going to transform. All right, now is the time that I'm going to hold my shift cut button down because I don't necessarily want to keep the proportions the same. So I'm going to sort of drag my 20. And I might want to make it a little bit wider or, or not. And sort of drag it around here. And I'll start with that, OK? I think that's a pretty good size compared to her. Um, you're going to see the cool thing is where you place, I'm going to press my V to go back to my move tool, where you place the 20 is going to visually change how far back she looks in the picture. You raise the 20 up versus bringing it down here, it changes her distance visually, which is kind of cool. So um, let's see if there's any questions so far. I'm looking pretty good. All right. Um, Okay, so now I'm just going to take that 20 and I'm going to drag it down to duplicate it. I just duplicate it down here, the duplication, and now I have two copies of 20. I'm going to take my move tool and move my 20 over here. And you could see Photoshop does a nice job of showing you when things are aligned. And if there's a little pink line at the bottom, kind of shows you that, All right? And all right, so I have my 220s. This is also another time when you may want to use a level line here to bring that up. Bring it up a little further and really make sure things are leveled the way you want it. Take my move tool, take my first set of 20, bring it down to touch that line. It's kind of not doing it. Second one. It's not touching the line, but you can see that it's even with the other one. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to move it also down a little bit. I'm going to take my, my lady, just kind of try and see if I can get her centered correctly. 
Sometimes it shows you and then try to find the equal distance between the 20 and the 20. Okay, that's pretty good to me. <clears throat> you can get crazy with this stuff. <laughs> okay, so I've got my two 20s. And now what I'm going to do is I need to, now she's sort of floating. I'm gonna, this line is bothering me now, so I'm gonna pull it out of the way. Um, now she's kind of floating. Oh, and I lost my, I lost that one. So we have to give her some shadows and um, here's how we're gonna do it. So I'm going to, um, I am going to, I don't know if it really matters if I put this next layer above the girl or below her, but I'll start off with above, and I'm gonna I'm gonna change the color of my brush back to black and white. You just have to press the the number D, the let the letter D, because you know letters D is a letter, not a number, and it will bring you back to the black and the white. And if you want to toggle your black and white, you press the letter X to toggle. So I wanna make sure that my this is at black. I'm going to go here to a gradient tool. Um, clicking on the gradient tool and I'm looking up here, my gradient, I want to pick a gradient that is um, foreground, will be black and transparent. Uh, the, the background will be transparent, okay? So we're starting from there. And I'm just going to, now I'm on my new layer. I'm just going to do this, drag it, and now, I made myself, oh, I think it's a little, it's a, almost, actually that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna even do another one. Just kind of drag it again. And then it kind of gives you this, this look here. All right, so I like that. I'm gonna take my layer though, and I'm going to shift it down. I'm gonna press Command T. Just shift it down a little bit. and do something else that's really cool. Now I'm gonna make another layer. And I think I want her I'll take my girl. I'm going to shift her down. Oops, sorry. Got to go into my girl. So I press Command T. So I'm going to go into my lady. I'm going to shift her here. That kind of pushes the 2020 into the foreground a little bit, and it pushes her a little bit closer. Again, that's what happens if I grab her and I bring her up. And she's more even with the 2020, then she looks like she's next to the 2020. If you pull her down, she looks like she's in the foreground and it pushes the 2020 back, which is kind of just an easy, cool effect. So I'm just gonna move her here. And now I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm just gonna drag that layer right above the first layer. I'm just gonna call this one uh, shadow layer. And now I'm gonna call this it's not really shadow, it's really reflection. I'm going to call this one reflections as well. And I'm going to use my brush tool, open it up, using my brackets to make it a little bit larger. And I'm going to use a soft brush. And I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to paint and paint. And paint because I want to create those illusion of reflections in the water, right? So now I on my reflection layer, I'm going to go up to filter, blur, motion blur, and I'm going to create some motion with that blur. Okay, and if you pull the distance, it'll it should show you. Pull it even a little bit further, and you can see that now. It's getting a little bit blurrier and a little bit more motion, even a little bit more. And there's no science here for this. This is, you know, kind of how you like it. What do you think looks good? That's okay. Okay. And I think that looks good. If I would have thought about this before, if I would have turned this layer into a smart layer, into a smart object, then I could, you know what, I'm going to go backwards and show you. I'm just going backwards. I'm getting rid of those reflections. I have my layer two that was named reflections. I'm going to right click on it, convert it to a smart object. Now I'm going to go to filter, blur, 
motion blur. Oh, <laughs> I can't do that. I have to. Oh, I can't do that. Sorry, guys. I just realized why it didn't, because you can't draw on a smart object. I'll just forget that part. Let's just go back. And I guess I have to do it again. So not a big deal. Okay. Doing some reflections here. And um, hmm, let me try it. I, I might as well try it live. Why not? This is this is the process, right? So let's see what will happen if I go right click now, convert it to a smart object. Aha. And then I say filter, blur, motion blur. Uh, now it works. Okay. So I press OK. And now look what happens. I can turn that motion blur on and off. And um, I can reopen the motion blur and make it less or more. So I, that's why one of the reasons I like smart objects. It, it just doesn't always work for every reason. And I'm going to go back down to my shadow layer, press Command-T, and I'm just going to bring it up again a little bit to kind of blend in with the shadows that I had just created, the, the reflections that I just created. And on that same shadow layer, I'm going to press, I'm using my brush tool, and I'm just going to add in a little bit over here for her feet. It's really to your preference, but that's how I make reflections. Wasn't that hard, right? Kind of cool, little trick. All right. Um, you can also play with things like, I'm gonna open up the 20. I'm gonna right click on it, go to blending mode. And you can play with things like strokes around your 20. Opening up the stroke, I can make the stroke white or a form of white see what happens. Um, but I don't really want a stroke necessarily around it. I might want to do a little bit of a bevel and a contour. Play. See if anything looks good. Maybe, maybe not. Turn off the stroke, see if that looks good. I, I would like to create like a little bit of a glow, an outer glow back here. Push that too. See, it was working for me last time. Move around the spread. A little bit of a glow. Um, you could see it's, oh, there we go, a little glow. I forgot what I had done. But see, that's what you got to do. You have to just go into the panels and play. So I, I guess I turn the stroke off. If I turn the bevel off, what happens? Let's see. Nothing. <laughs> so I guess it's the outer glow feature. I turn my opacity. Play with the opacity, maybe bring it back down a little bit. And now I have just a slight, slight glow around the edges. Again, just preference. I'm going to turn it off now. Turn off the effect and turn it back on. I'd like to, if you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, turn it off. You can do the same thing with the girl. Um, you can apply blending option. Maybe a little outer glow to her. Give her just a tiny bit, maybe. Maybe not. Really going to be up to you. You can even um, here. Oh, we open that up, and uh, just play around with the different size and spread. See if it makes any difference for you. But that just you know. Just a little bit. I don't know if it looks too much like a halo. You have to decide. All right, so let's bring the hat in, okay? Here we go. Hat's going in now. So now again, I'm going to go File, Lace Embedded. Got, I found this hat. Um, it's just free stock. And I think I got it off of, um, I don't remember where, Pixabay, maybe. And bring it in, press OK. I'm just going to bring it up to the top because I like it there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with, you can leave the, the string if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go into image, make an adjustment layer, pull this one way, pull this the other way, and now you have a nice black hat. You can do the same thing with the filters. Um, 
this is my hat. I'm just going to call it hats. I remember. Now, remember how I made that glow, the effect here? I'm going to hold down my option. I'm going to go over to my 20 that has the glow on it. I'm going to hold down the option button, and I'm going to pull the effect up to the hat level. And it, what it does is it doesn't just remove this effect and place it here. It copies it, the exact same effect. So if I turn it on, I have a little bit of a glow around the hat if you want it. If you don't want it, don't use it. Um, smart filters have, you know, a mask as well. So you could always press B. You could possibly mask some of that, that filter out. Actually, it's just masking out the levels, so I don't want to do that. Never mind. I'm just going to step backwards. Um, if you don't like it, don't use it. It's a little bit of a glow. You can also go back into your outer glow and maybe reduce it a little bit. It's a little too much. These are just like the subtle little things that you may or may not want to use. Um, so I'm going to I'm on my hat layer. Press Command T. I'm going to move it and place it right. Well, yeah, I'm going to place it on my girl's head. And size her up a little bit so she looks like she's not wearing a hat that's way too big for her. Press OK. And now I have a hat, right? And that works for a lot of different ways. Now, here's a cool thing you can do with the hats, right? Um, you can duplicate your hat, Command J, and now I made a copy. And I'm going to take my V, my move tool, take my hat. I'm going to take the, um, I don't love the, the glow. I'm going to take the glow off of it. I'm not loving it. Um, I'm actually just going to remove the effect from the hat just to make it easier. And I'm going to take my hat, and my transformation tool is already open. And I'm just going to kind of turn it that way. Now, here's one thing also to remember. If you want a whole bunch of hats to be flying in the air, that's how I had made the original one, you have to remember about thinking about depth. So things that are further back are always going to be smaller to the eye and blurrier. Things that are pushed forward are going to be larger, and they're going to be crisper. So um, I'm going to get rid of my filter. I don't really need a filter on the hat. But my hat is a smart object, and I want the hat to be a smart object. If I wasn't a smart object, I would turn it into one. Because what I'm going to do, oh, whoops, I did. I took my, my levels away. I don't want to take my levels away. OK, so um, I, just, I just step backwards and put my levels back on. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to press Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to blur out my hat a little bit. And press OK. So that looks pretty good, right? It just kind of pushes it back. Now I'm going to press Command J, make a copy, another duplicate of that hat, pull it over here. And it's already, my transformation tools are already open. So I'm just going to turn my hat. I'm going to make it smaller. Press OK. Go back into my Gaussian blur for that hat. Double click on it. And I'm going to pull up the blur and make it even blurrier, right? Maybe not that blurry, but that again should help to um, visually push the hat backwards. I'm going to go to my hat copy to press Command J. That makes a copy using my move tool. I'm just going to move it. Maybe I'll put it over here, make it even a little bit smaller. And my Gaussian blur. I don't even think I need to add much more blur to this. I think it already gives the effect. And you could just keep doing that. Just keep making copies of the hat. Um, if you think something is not, if it's too big or it's not blurry enough, you can go back in and adjust. So the nice thing is that, you know, you can just keep moving it around and, and make a whole bunch of these little guys. So um, I'm going to do again, Command J. Remember which one you're working on. Bring this one over here. Maybe I'll bring it down over here. Maybe I'll make it even a little bit smaller. Press OK. And actually, I think that one should even be whoops, a little bit smaller. It's really far back. I wanted to go really far back. And let me move this one over here. Maybe even a little bit smaller. Press OK. Command J for that one again. And you know, you can just do as many as you want. There's no rules, right? Make them a little bit smaller. 
See, now th this one I made smaller, it pushes it to the background, but it's not blurry enough, really. So you should, you know, um, probably make that one blurrier. So I'm going to my Gaussian blur. And that really pushes it back for you. And, um, you know, just keep doing it. Move the little guys around to wherever you want them to be until you find a nice, a nice location. All right. So, and that's how you create something like this. And I want to do one more thing because I think it's kind of cool. So we made one that the girl's walking on water. Love that, right? I think it's just a little bit different. A lot of times you see it with the grass coming up, but I do love the grass also. So I thought I would show you how we can really transform this one from being um, reflections to being grass. But does anybody have any questions? I'm on a little bit of a delay, but I can look. I'm looking on, I have a second screen. So um, just give me a couple of likes out there. If you're good, you know, just let me know you're out there. I can see it on my second screen. It's just a little bit delayed. So. How are we doing? Good? Questions? Anyone? Okay, so I'll just keep going. So, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna just change it up. I'm gonna keep my hats. I like them. Sometimes when I start working with a lot of layers, I, I'm gonna grab the top hat, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom hat, and I'm gonna hold my shift key down while I'm doing this, okay? And now I have selected all of the hats at the same time. I'm gonna drag them and put them into a, a folder because I like folders. It just makes it easier for me to see things. So now all my hats are in here and if I wanna move them around, I can move them all at the same time now. If I select Command T, the folder, I can just move my hats all in one shot. Command Z, let's bring it back. Or you can open up my folder again and um, it can show me. And then you could just work on one hat at a time. Um, so, I'm going to take these reflections and the shadow layer, and I'm going to grab them and put them in a folder. I'm just going to call them reflections. I'm going to turn them off. Going down to the bottom, I'm going to press File, Place Embedded, and I'm going to open up this fun sunset right there. All right, I like this one too. I think this one's so pretty. Um, but this time we're gonna do it and make it a little bit different. We're gonna make it look like grass. So, that's okay. So, um, I'm going to just open up a new la layer. I'm gonna go back to my um, gradient tool with the black brush, and I'm just gonna go on that new layer. I'm just gonna drag it up and see what happens, okay? And drag it up. All right, I'm going to I, now you can see that um, the layer is below the girl and the girl has some glow on her. So I can drag that layer above the girl so it can cover the glow we're showing. Now it's covering the glow because it's covering the girl. So I'm gonna drag it up one more time. I'm going to take my numbers. I'm gonna hold down my sh uh, shift button and I'm gonna drag, take both numbers. Now I'm gonna press Command T to open up my trace free transformation tool, I'm gonna to hold my shift button down. I'm gonna make my numbers a little bit bigger and I'm gonna bring them down to the girl. All right, bring them down here. So they're a little bit closer to her. Now I have a, um, a shadow layer on the bottom. And again, I don't know if I like that command T again. Just bring it up a tiny bit, I'm not even sure. And now, I'm going back to my layer one, and call that shadow, and I'm going to make a new layer right above it and call that one grass. Now, I went into, again, free, um, I went into free, uh, I just Googled free Photoshop grass brushes, and I found one that I liked, and I tested it out, and I loaded it up into uh, Photoshop already. So I'm gonna press my B for brush. I'm going to, you can do this also. You can go in here if you wanna change up your brushes. But you can also just get the dialog to come up by just right clicking. Dialog comes up. I have my general brushes, but I have my grass Photoshop brushes three. 
I'm going to open it up. I'm going to find a brush that I like. That's kind of a cool brush. And I'm going to make sure I'm on a black. I have black. And I'm on that new grass layer. And I'm just going to press and paint in some grass. And now it's going to give the illusion that she's standing in grass overlooking some water. You can, uh, I don't like that. I'm going to go back, maybe. But I like this brush because it kind of has like a little, you try out, you can right click, you can test out some other brushes. Um, if you want to give the grass some, some more effects to it, uh, I don't like that brush. You can also make your brushes a little bit smaller or larger. It's really up to you. This is, you know, it's not enough grass for me. That's a big piece of grass. So I'm going to use my bracket tool, make my grass. Oops. I don't even know if I like this grass, but we'll try it. Yeah, actually, it looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So now it's kind of, it's kind of, looks like it's kind of coming around the back here. I bring it around the back of the two. Now it kind of makes it look like the two, the, the, the numbers are sort of falling into it. Might be a little too much. Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, definitely no effects on there. Turn that off. Um, again, it's Photoshop. If you did something and you went a little bit too far, go backwards. Go back. And you'll also notice, you know, you can also take your numbers and pull them back up a little bit. Um, now I'm looking at my numbers and I'm going to highlight both of them at the same time by holding down my shift button and pressing Command T. Now I can also just move them. I can pressing my shift button and holding it so I can shrink them without. There we go. This is really up to you. How do you want it to look? All totally your decision. You are the artist. You get to decide. Um, now I would probably go back to my hats and using my move tool, maybe you just kind of move around some hats, maybe even add a few more. And maybe I would even go back to my girl, press Command T, make her a little bit bigger here. I'm not holding my shift button down because I do want her to stay proportional. She can take up a little bit more room. That would be okay. In this image because I brought those 20s down. Again, this is totally subjective. This is all you. You decide. You're the artist. And, oh, okay. Somebody else asked if you were using a tablet. I've never used one, but I'm curious, considering getting one. Um. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Okay, I don't use a tablet, so I don't. I don't have much to say about it. Um, I do know that my son's girlfriend has a iPad Pro, and it's pretty darn cool. Um, I don't have one, so I, I don't know. Oh, do you mean a tablet for for drawing? I do have a tablet for drawing. <laughs> um, I have the. Oh gosh, what is it called? It's like the pen tablet. Um but I never use it. I should, I really should. And I'll tell you why I don't use it. I have used it, but I am a in my bed editor. I like to lay in my bed or on my couch and do my edits. And so if I find that when you have a tablet with a pen tool, you know, it's another piece of equipment that would have to go to the side. So if I was an editor where that I sat at my desk a lot, that probably would be an amazing tool to have, especially if I drew a lot more. Um, but then to sit on a bed, it's not that easy. So I don't know. I, I use my mouse pad. I don't know how I do it, but I just do. Um, I'm just moving the hat up. Just grabbed it. And okay. And okay. So we've got another, got a whole nother version. We had reflections. We turned off the reflections and we made grass. Got to love Photoshop, right? Okay, so, oh, you're welcome, Valerie. Thanks, Lara. All right, so I think um, that might be it. I'm not sure. And I don't think I have anything else to teach you today. <laughs> but if this pandemic keeps going on much longer, I'll just keep finding more things to teach you guys. Um, Got to fill my days. Actually, my days are very full. So, um, 
Okay, so any questions? Let's see, it's gonna give me a little bit of time. I'm gonna actually stop the sharing so I can see. Um, all right, now I'll be able to see a little bit better. I'll be on live time. Okay, yeah, now I can see. All right, so somebody asked me if I was using the editing tablet. Yeah, so that's my answer about the editing tablet. It's not that I don't, I mean, people, you, you watch the editing videos and people are always using tablets. I just, I, and you know, I was thinking about it the other day, pulling it out and playing around with it. Um, sometimes I use it, but I haven't really in a long time. Um, so that's, anything else? Oh, okay, so someone asked me, they're late, where do I find the sun water? Where do you find the sun water? Oh, um, that sun, the the photo that both of those photos if you don't take photos like that yourself i went on to a free site called unsplash i think i might have gotten this one off of unsplash it's like free um stock photography that you don't have to give any attribution to and um it can be used for whatever so i just googled sunset and i came up with those i liked them um yeah so that's for, for free backgrounds, if I don't shoot it myself, I do shoot, I do a lot of landscape photography, so I may often just use my own photos. Like I did a, um, I did another silhouette uh, with the big earth and then um, the Milky Way behind it and the stars. So that was kind of fun. The earth obviously was not my photo, but um, the Milky Way and stars were my photos. So that was kind of cool. I do try to use my own photos when I can, just because, you know, it's kind of cool that like, you know, that, that I can say I took that photo too, but totally don't have to. So Unsplash is one place that you can go to. It's U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H. Um, so that's a good place to go get yourself some free backgrounds. That's, I don't know if I got the hat there. I might've got it at um, Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. That's another place to get free backgrounds and um, free clip art. And, um, that's that's it. So I just want to thank you guys for coming to this. If there's no more questions, um, also I want to thank you all for being so. Um, I know that I was giving away a lot of things this month, and um, my store, which has been running for about a year and a half, Photo Box Designs. Um, first of all, thank you for those who support me. Um, it's a small business that's grown, and um, I'm very very grateful to you guys, you don't have to be here. You don't ever have to buy anything from me ever to be here and I will, whenever I give away free tutorials, I'm happy to help. I'm an educator at heart first. I'm a speech pathologist and I work in a school district. So teaching is just what I like to do. Um, but you know, I am very grateful that the store has grown so much. And um, I just wanna say that the store that, that I use is Weebly. It's the worst website ever and it, Christmas time when uh, was our busy season and every five seconds people were messaging me saying they can't check out, they can't check out. Well, how do you have an e-commerce store that can't check out? I contacted Weebly a numerous amount of times and they always tell me that it's not their problem, that it's the person who was trying to check out the problem. That can't be. People are checking out from all around the world. So, you know, so from starting in December, I hired a web designer and I've been working with him to create a brand new site for me. So I'm so close to having it up. It's actually all ready to go. It just needs the products to be put inside of it. And there's 600 products because my store is, um, it's not just my work. We have featured, what I call featured artists. Most of the people that are featured artists are sell in the store. They came right out of the group, not this group, the photo box design the in, inside the photo box. And we're not just selling, you know, box grids. We're selling all kinds of backgrounds and, we're expanding. So um, I have nine vendors right now and um, feature artists that come out of the group. And um, so the site will have them on there also, and it's gonna be like a full-blown multi-vendor site. But I'm not looking to make it gigantic. I'm not looking to take on a thousand um, of vendors. I'm looking to keep the site, you know, at a place that has quality products and you know, make it not so competitive for the vendors that sell with me that you know, I don't wanna have vendors that all sell the same exact products. I want things to look a little different. So um, just wanna thank you for bearing with me because if you give me another week or two, the new site will be up 
and hooray. Um, I hopefully no one will ever say to me, I can't check out even for freebies. It's the freebies that no one can check out with. So I'm just, that's it. My little rant about Weebly. Don't make an e-commerce site on Weebly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, anybody have any more questions for me about anything? Oh, you know, somebody had asked me in the group if I was going to discuss how I would, how I sell to the seniors and how I, how I'm working it right now for the templates. Um, I don't remember who it was, but I said I would. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Um, yeah, somebody had said to me, because you know, like everyone's going crazy right now, no one can take photos. And so they're buying a lot of templates for Mother's Day, the Easter, for some people are doing very, very well. They're offering, they're buying like a simple $5 template. They're offering it out to their, um, to the local people around them, to their clients or just to locals. And they're saying, you know, you provide the photo for me, or if you already had a photo shoot, let's say this year, I'll use one of my photos that I took of you, or you take a photo and provide it for me and I'll fill the template and make something special for mothers. They were doing it for Easter. I think it was a really big hit for a lot of people for Easter. And then other people struggled to figure out how to do this. But I do know from being not just in our groups, but other groups that there are some photographers that are doing very, very well doing this. Um, and it's, you know, some people are doing it and giving it away. Some people are doing it and saying charge, you know, charging, saying pay what you want because it's a tough economic time. And some people are, you know, just they're charging maybe like $10, $15 to just fill a template and they're making a little bit of extra money because they're not working right now. So, um, Someone had asked me in the other group, I would discuss how to do that. Um, so I can tell you that I've only, I've sold a few to my um, to people off of Facebook to my own you know local community, and I have not done a tremendous amount yet because I'm so busy with the migration of my store. Oh, Jenny, it was you. Good. Okay. Good. See, I told you I would I would address it. Um, so I haven't I have put it out there, but my, my the migration of my store is such a huge job and um, that I'm kind of consumed with it, just bringing all the products over. And then on top of that, because uh, people have been um, buying templates, like the mom and the mama, and the, you now they're working on Mother's Day, Father's Day, and the seniors, um, that I just, I am afraid to put too much on my Facebook and then I was gonna start getting a lot of orders and then I'm gonna have no time at all. Um, because I've been making these other templates like crazy. So, um, but what I did was I happen to have a lot of friends right now who have kids that are graduating high school or college. I'm in that age range where everybody's between, all my friends' kids are between the ages of 16 and 24. So that helps a little bit. Um, so I, I asked a friend if they wanted me to make them a template just for free. You know, I gifted it to her. So she sent me a few photos of her son, the graduation photo that they'd already taken and just some memorable ones. And I put it into the template and then she posted it on Facebook. Actually, one time I did post a little advertisement. I think I posted it in the group. I posted an advertisement once to my Facebook page and to my business page just to say like, oh, I'm offering these. And I did get some response, but then I made one for my friend and she posted it on her page. So then she got like a hundred likes, of course, because you know, that's what happens. And then I started getting messages. Oh, um, how can I do this for my child? How can I do this for my child? How can I do this for my child? So from that post, I think I booked one or two. Then of course, then I did that one or two, and then they posted it to Facebook, and then I booked another one or two. So again, I'm not pushing it, and I can see how that is going to, how that can really um, explode. And I'm a little bit nervous about pushing it too far from myself right now because I just don't have enough time to fill them. So I already have an order sitting there and I haven't done it yet. But it, it doesn't take that long to do if you pick the right template. I would highly suggest you pick something that does not take a lot of work. Pick one that has one to four pictures maximum. What I've done was, I told them, I use a website called wetransfer.com. So it's www.wetransfer.com. That is a way for people to um, send high digital products, you know, this, because sometimes these pictures are too large to send um, just through regular email. 
So I tell them I, to go look, and I'm gonna share my screen with you again, and I'll show you what I put together on my website. I do have the, um, I do have a store, so I have the ability to make, you know, um, a website with samples. But if you have just a regular website and you're able to make a page that just shows the samples, even if you can't sell it through them, through the website, you can do that too. So I'm just gonna um, share my screen with you one more time. Actually, hang on a sec, let me just open it up. On my screen. Okay, so this is what I did. Um, I made a page on my in my store called Custom Orders, but you can absolutely, you know, if you just have a regular website, make a page that says Custom Orders. Don't have to have like anything that they can purchase from. You can have them buy, you know, pay you through uh, PayPal, Venmo, um, however you want it. And so I did this. I put up the templates that I'm offering. I mean, you know, I make them, so why not? And then um, I just showed the different templates and I had given a price on how much I'm charging. So I'm charging, the most expensive one I'm charging is this one because honestly, that would take me a very long time to do if someone chooses that one. And I can already see, I'm actually thinking about taking that one down, to be quite honest with you, because that's gonna take a lot of time. Because it's not just the pictures, the pictures themselves, but it's actually like, having them send me like all those pictures. It's just, uh, actually, I'm making that decision right this moment that I'm taking that one down. <laughs> so that one won't be there. Um, but I made this one $20 because again, this is a nine box. So you know, it's a little bit more work. Um, something like this, I only made $10 because that is one picture and that's it. So they send me one picture, I pop it in, I'm done. This template was made so that you could change the wording on it. So what I had done was I had, um, I had said $10 if everything stays the same. And then I wrote, if I have to customize the wording on this at all for them, then there would be an extra charge. I don't know what it would be. I mean, if they want me to change one word, I'm not gonna charge them anything more for that. If they want me to just say like, my kid doesn't play video games, can you change video games to you know, eating brownies all day? I don't, <laughs> or just the name of their school or something like that, you know, one change I'm not gonna charge them for if that takes me three seconds. But if they want me to really customize it, then I'll charge a little bit extra. Sure, why not? Um, and then the majority of the other ones, I'll tell you the one that has sold already four times is this one. Everybody, could, I think because the first person I did it for did that one and then they just want the same one. So that one, these take me about five minutes. I have them send me four to six, I tell them, always tell, tell them to send me like six photos so that I have options. Um, and then they send them to me. I told them to number them in order if they know how to do that, if they know how to change the JPEG number to like, you know, rename it to one, two, three, four. So I know which is their top four. And then some alternates because you want to make sure that it can kind of fit well into those let into the letters. And, um, and then I place them in, I send them a screenshot. It takes me, you know, three, five minutes, not even to put them in. I send them a screenshot. Um, saying, here you go, this is what I um, what I may do, what do you think? And then, you know, someone's always gonna say, oh, could you change this picture out? I mean, it happens, you know, so everybody's done that, but it's, it's it takes two seconds to change out a picture. And then um, when I'm done, I send them a high resolution digital and then they can use it however they like. Um, they can use it for uh, social media, but I really feel like the best advertisement is other people posting it. Because once they see it and they post it on their page, people are gonna say, how can I do that? Um, the other thing that I was thinking, um, not just uh, not just having a, you know, to do it once for a friend and then see what happens, but also the mom's pages. So, you know, I don't know what the rules are in all your mom's pages, but a lot of my mom's pages that are popular are not, um, you're really not allowed to, uh, I'll answer that question in a sec about the release. Um, you're really not allowed, I'm just gonna open up my Facebook again, I'm, I can't see your names. Um, really not allowed to post, you know, some Facebook's, some mom's pages are buy sell kind of pages and you're allowed to sell things and some you're not. But if you have your friend who you make the photo for post it there and say, hey moms, this is what I'm doing for my kid who's graduating, how awesome is this? Um, you're inevitably gonna get people who are gonna write, I love this, where can I do this? Where can I get this from? That's the hope, right? Um, 
use those mom's pages, you know, and ask your friends to do that for you. I think that's a great marketing tool and see what happens. And don't get frustrated if it doesn't happen for you the first time. It doesn't mean that um, people don't like it. I mean, this is a really hard economic s situation right now. That's why I'm keeping those digitals $15. You know, $15 is honestly, if, if this was a situation where economic times were much better, I probably would charge a little bit more for that. I would, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want it to be reasonable. I want people to be able to have that ability to have a nice keepsake of their kids who aren't going to have a graduation this year. Um, cause that just stinks. You know, my daughter's graduating college this year and she's not going to have a graduation right now. And it's terrible, you know? So, and these kids are not going to graduate, have their proms and ceremonies to graduate high school. So at least they can have a keepsake and I'm not looking to, you know, I, I'm not looking to make it so expensive for anybody. Um, so, um, wait, hang on one more second. I'm sorry. Hope I don't lose you. I just want to get back in the group so I can see who's, and you asked me about release. I did not give a release. I probably should give a release. To be honest with you. <laughs> probably should. Um, I mean, what are they going to do with them? They're not going to sell them it's for their kid. Right. So I, I'm letting, I don't care. They can print them anywhere they want. They can post them all over social media. What else are they going to do with them? You know? So, but yeah, why not give them a release? I think that's a good idea. Totally a good idea. You know, when I used to do family portrait photography, I always gave them a release, you know, so that they can and um, print and, and not use them for other purposes. But I can't imagine what other purpose they're going to do, use it for other than just for themselves. So, but yes, definitely do that. Use, give them a release. Hope that answers your question, really. It took me a long time to answer that question. Um, Anything else? Just looking for the group on my Facebook page. And okay. So so that's it. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. And this tutorial should live in our Facebook group. And I'm gonna put it in the um Oh, I'll tell you in a sec. Um, I'm going to put it in the units. I made a unit that says live Facebook tutorials. So I, every time I do one, I'll just put it there. But it's also like you can look up the videos and find it there too. So um, you can watch this again. And um, uh, some places for printing. Well, um, I use Bayes Photo. I use, um, I've used Nation Photo in America. So I use Nation Photo. I'm not sure if these are like international photo places. Um, yeah, you can totally go back to, you just come back to the group. You come back to the group and you'll be able to review this. You can watch it as many times as you want. <laughs> it's just gonna, you could just replay it. It's just gonna, it's a video that's gonna live in the group. So um, you can watch it as much as you like. And I'm probably, if I have time, I'm probably also gonna throw it on YouTube too. Um, so, yeah, Nation Photo. Um, those are a couple of the places that I print from. If anyone else has other places that they print from that they love, you know, you can throw it out there also. So, uh, anyone else? All right, well, if you're watching this on replay and you have some questions, you could just throw them in the comments and I'll try to come back to them later and answer. All right, so. Um, Anyone else? Anything else? Oh, you're welcome, Jenny. Thank you. All right, enjoy. And I want to see silhouette photos all over the group, okay? So just post them away. Let's see what you could do. Be creative. Go find some cool ones. Go make some cool ones. Have fun. Because we have to have fun. We have to have fun and stay creative during this time. All right. All right. Bye, guys.